And welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Where Angels Fear to Tread. I'm your host, April, and you are tuned to CKUW 95.9 FM live in Winnipeg. And we are coming uh, to you from the University of Winnipeg, the fourth and a half floor. And uh, I'm in the booth. And today's guest, we have a special guest, uh, two of them. Um, Mark Angelo and uh, Lena Ariel Cummings are your hosts, and they are a married couple with a trans history. Um, if you want, check out their channel, Real Talk with the Cummings, a show that brings you information regarding the global issues we all are facing, such as the latest LGBT news, health and wellness issues, spiritual breakthroughs, and more. They are truth seekers and tellers and love to learn and teach, covering many topics relating to the awakening of our species, new uh, NWO issues, new world order issues, multidimensional beings, spirituality, duality, two spirit, religion versus truth, music, important global news, fitness, nutrition, earth evolution, and much, much more. Um, also, uh, the show is quite daring and discusses real issues with real solutions. It's time to break free from programming and ask the real questions. Uh, they both have d Taino roots and are from the island of Cuba and Puerto Rico and are very passionate about the awakening of our human family. Yes, all our relations. We are for self, ex they are for self expression, and I am too, but against the medicalization and politicalization of human suffering. And uh, hello, are you guys there? Yes, we are. Yes, there are. Well, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for the gracious uh, intro and uh, for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, I've just recently come across your work. Um, there's a, I think there's about 12 people that I regularly follow, and I think you follow some of them too, uh, Global Witness. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Uh, no, we haven't been able to no, not find out information about him, but it's always nice to hear about new people. Yeah, yeah. So there's a group of people that I've been following for a number of years, and finally I came across your work. And this, I'll be honest, this is something, this is an area I did not want to touch because of uh, the political climate of our day. And, um, you know, there's political correctness, uh, there's, you know, me medical issues, there's all kinds of things, uh, which you guys talk about on your show. But before we go there, um, what are some of the other things um, other than just trans health and LGBT news, like with the New World Order issues and especially the multidimensional beings? I'm curious about that. Well, basically, what we're looking at is seeking the truth of where we come from, why have we been lied to about everything? Because once you go in this rabbit hole, you start to realize that we've been lied about religion, about our health, our ideology, you know, just about everything. So um, as far as interdimensional beings, um, instead of calling them aliens, which is what most people are used to, uh, we believe that there are other entities that come from other dimensions. Right. And... So, uh, in fact, I was talking to one of my guests about that, and, and my take on it is that it's not just interdimensional, but intra- and extra-dimensional beings as a possibility. Very much so. It's, it's one of those things where, as for me, it's a new area of um, learning. I'm learning every day something new, you know, talking about our origins, where we come from, what really happened um, in the Garden of Eden. The story has been so twisted and, and, and just misrepresented. And, um, 
even the story of of Jesus, you know, um, all of these things, all of these things have been, I don't know, it's like, where is the truth, you know, because now is the time that we are to be awakened at this, at this place in time right now. Yeah, and I'm, I apologize for calling you uh, Lena, it's actually Lina, right? No, it's actually Lena. Oh, like, Lena, I'm yeah. terrible with names, and... It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I yeah, well, it's, it's, as long as people check out your work, that's my real uh, my, that's my real sure. goal, goal for today. So, well, sure. Um, maybe we can give that information out uh, right at the moment uh, before we uh, delve a little deeper into things. So, is there? I know you have RT Real Talk uh, with. Um, I can't remember the title. I'm sorry. That's why I'm asking. Oh, it's called the Cummings. It's called Real Talk with the Cummings. And if you just type that into YouTube, um, it'll it'll show right up. We also have a blog that has a lot of great information about a mixture of different things. Uh, TransitionRadio.blogspot.com. Right, right. Um, that's Gypsy Blue 2012.blogspot.com. No, it's transitionradio.blogspot.com. Oh. oh, sorry. It was a little confusing because the information kind of got changed around there and I couldn't find some of it. So uh, that's why I let you guys... <laughs> oh, they... sure. Yeah, transitionradio.blogspot.com. Okay. Yeah. And... Mark, you have a show. It was called Transition Radio. Um... He's been on YouTube since 2006 and doing awakening stuff since then. I mean, yeah. And then I, I interview people from all over the world with Transition Radio through Gay Life Television and other um, other platforms as well, where I interview people from all over the world that had a trans history or doctors, researchers, and so forth and so on. Yeah, and also part of part of what you uh, largely uh, deal with with people is helping them out, uh, not not transitioning per se, but in uh, with some of the difficulties associated with that, right? Yes, it's it's important, in my opinion, with the political climate that we have this day and age, to get a variety of information out there, not just a one size fits all, right? Which is we're finding that it's creating a lot of problems, but because of the political climate, they only want one voice to be heard. And I think it's important for everyone to fully communicate and allow the freedom of speech to be able to do so. And I think it's important also that people get acquainted with the realities of what takes place when a trans person does decide to undergo um, a very, a very, um, invasive procedure mm -hmm. um, that that uh, is going to alter their life and their body for the rest of their lives and potentially you know give them give them um, an ability to recover from simple um, types of, of afflictions and things like that as we age we're just watching a show with um, TLC on TLC about I am jazz and we're watching how Jazz is undergoing a surgery that basically Jazz is a, is a, um, a guinea pig for medical procedures, you mm. know, and, and this type of thing. Right. Is that the person who has uh, weight issues and other things? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because... And it's 17. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. No, um, so... I, I, did you want to take it already into that? that yeah, uh, yeah. Avenue, or did you want to talk about other things? Uh, well, Pardon. well, it's up to you. Uh, I'd like to do both. Um, what do you consider important global news? Uh, and also, I'd like to talk about fitness and nutrition because I know you you really have a passion for that, Mark. Yes, I do. I've actually been in the industry since 1998. I own my own, uh, at the time, I own my own wellness center. I'm an occupational therapist, certified nutrition consultant, and um, 
and um, master personal trainer. So, you know, I wanted to change the way people looked at health by creating a preventative program so that they don't need to go into the hospitals and, and have to deal with medication, which we know that any kind of synthetics has side effects. So people have to really educate themselves in, in what they're putting in their body, the lack of activity that they have in the course of the day, how they think, because your mind, your thoughts could be just as toxic as smoking a cigarette. Right. You know, so it's, it's just empowering the human family to take control of their lives, not to allow the television or any type of media to dictate their lives and, and to become aware of how easily they're being programmed. Right, and I also think it's important, as you said at the beginning, uh, we are being lied to about everything, uh, and I, I do mean everything. Um, our history, um, you know, uh, the whole New World Order thing, we don't have a clue who these people are, we always call them they, uh, you know, and uh, I mean... Anyone who's done extensive research, I've done the research. I, I know who these, I know what the structure is. But we always run into this wall, this barrier, where it seems to transition from human to something that seems inhuman, you know? Yes, and that's where the interdimensional beings, you're looking at a bloodline. that, And, and it gets really deep, but we're looking at a bloodline that has taken over um, for the longest time, they're almost like the keepers of the earth from the original creators of this body that we, we call our meat suits. And they're the ones that are kind of like wanting to keep the population down, dumbing us down, drugging us, and keeping us at bay. And so those are the they, it's the elitists, the, the ones with the bloodline. Right, and I also wanted to, to make the uh, d a disclaimer here. Um, what... Uh, some of the things we'll be discussing today may be uh, controversial, so if you are easily offended, this program may not be for you. And uh, I try to do my best. Um, I try to uh, offer as many facts as possible. And speaking of as many facts as possible, when it comes to uh, the LGBTQ uh, uh and I always joke A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, eventually, we're going to run out of letters, you know. But uh, I think it's important to be informed about these things. Um, like when I, um, like I knew when I was very young that um, I, I wanted to transition. But I also knew that I wasn't healthy enough to handle it. And I think this is the problem with a lot of people who uh, make the make these decisions, and the, and a lot of them are talked into it. There should be like a third option, pro, con, and you know, do some research. We'll talk about it and and explore alternatives. You know, I think I think that's partly what we're missing, and I know that that goes against the party line. But uh, and I'm sticking my neck out here, but um, I this is where angels fear to tread, and this is the kind of program that this is. Yes, it's it's definitely um, like people need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Where has all this come from? You know, there's a division in the medical community as we talked about about gender dysphoria, and when they say anything against the party line, then they're ostracized and. And some of them get death threats and, and all sorts of different things. So, you know, we need to ask real questions, you know. Um, yeah, and when the, uh, sorry to interject, and, and these are, are not um, just average folks. These are people who are top in their field, right? Like PhDs. Totally, totally. But they all get discredited and they all get threats, you know, and they all get... Um, eight ball pretty much you know and, and we have to ask the real question you know when we ask when we when we say gender identity what are we actually describing it really cannot be an identity if any conventional sense of the word and, and I have I mean there's so much I even put together a little blog entry today regarding you know my thought process on all of this but um, you know when a biological 
Michael Mail declares that they identify as a male on what ba- a female. I'm sorry. On what basis can they be claiming a female identity? You know, is how do we how do we go into that that we feel a certain way? You know, it, it makes no sense. We could maybe sympathize with or, or want to be the opposite gender, but we can't really say that we feel like that gender. There's no there's no factors involved. Right. And it's actually, and in my opinion, it's disrespectful to the gender that we're trying to emulate because it's how do we know what a person feels or how does that particular group of people feel? Right, and I would like to also uh, re- reiterate that uh, we are not medical professionals, but we are all experienced in terms of transitioning, um, transgender. I, like, I don't consider myself uh, transgender. That's, a, that's a, a, an aside. I'm actually two-spirit, and uh, I would like to speak about that for a minute. What is your take on that? The two spirit. Yeah, I think uh, two spirit is a uh, is a, a very uh, well documented um, um, type of individual that historically has existed throughout the annals of time. I I think that they've been given the opportunity to uh, to exist in the more indigenous native cultures mm-hmm. that respected gender in a way that um, today's modern society, especially in the westernized world that, that uh, you and I are existing in right now, um, you know, that that was something that was honored and respected. Um, the connection that a person who actually had the capability to both have both the feminine and masculine essence evident in their lives and express both of those things was something that was almost shamanistic. It was almost um, a healing for, for the people groups that were that had the blessing of being able to have those kinds of people within their tribe. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's been demonized. It's been um, ridiculed by the West and also has been taken and hijacked in an impure manner by um, by other people and other groups. Um, but I really believe that Two-Spirit, that's what Mark and I identify as, as, as Two-Spirit. And I want to take it a step further because, you know, I believe that all human beings have a soul, and in that soul you have a male and a female energy aspect of it, sort of like a yin and a yang. Right. And I think religion and society in general has kind of tried to, sweep it under a rug and ignore it, and that's why we're seeing a lot of people as we're evolving the shit that's taking place, becoming aware of their other energy source. If you were born a female, you're starting to become aware of your male energy, and if you were born a male, you're starting to become aware of your female energy, and we're trying to somehow make sense of this and combine the two energy, because that's where the healing is going to take place. Right. And that's I- my male and female energy. Right, and I also think I also think uh, uh, Lena, you had expressed um, part of your life experience was traveling around to uh, like clothing stores uh, with the female members of your family, and um, so it's like, and ha- ha- what comes to mind when I when I heard you say that was marketing, you know, all the propaganda and the marketing that's going on these days is just insane. And also I wanted to point out that there is a pre-colonial two-spirit and there's a, a post-colonial two-spirit. The post-colonial two-spirit um, has to do, and I actually met the gentleman who came up with the term, uh, for the UN in uh, 1990, Albert McLeod, uh, McLeod. and um, so he was trying to find a term that would uh, cover LGBT issues as long as well as trans issues, and he's a two spirit himself, and so this is a relatively new term. This two spirit. It's, it's a new term, but it's it's something that. I believe before we were divided, you know, we were originally an androgynous species, and 
those interdimensional beings that we were talking about in the beginning divided us. Right. You know, it's, it's, we've been like separated from our, our essence of our unity, and that's what we keep searching for, that other half of us that's missing. Right. And, you know, and I truly believe that the clinical psychologists or so-called gender therapists are applying this eternal gender identity model of transsexuality and they're participating in a deepening of a misunderstanding, something that a psychologist would never intentionally do for any other patient, making any kind of claims in, in any of the me medical uh, disorders to rationalize a behavior caused by a paraphilia or any sorts of, you know, wanting and feeling. You know, it's just like there's no other um, diagnosis that allows that. Yeah, and that... That, sorry to inter interject, but that's that's kind of what I was trying to say uh, at the beginning, uh, earlier rather, uh, when uh, I had said, you know, about options, right? You know, like, exactly. there used to be an option if you were gay, and I don't mean this in a negative way. Uh, for people who were gay, sometimes there was an option for them to, um, how should I put it? to live a non-gay life. Exactly. Right? Exactly. They should either act upon it or not act upon it. Yeah, there was at least that option. But when it's, you know, I think part of the problem is, is um, and I, I'm not a Christian, but I do believe that uh, Christ uh, is a master. And um, so if I were to draw anything from the Bible at all, it would be, you know, the Christos, you know, and I've studied it. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that what I'm trying to get at is, especially with the, uh, residential school and the genocide that happened here and trying to convert us all into good little Christians, um, you know, really, uh, twisted everything around. Like there are people who are thrown off reservations because they are two spirit. Wow. You know? So I had that the idea of gender identity as an internal state of being or experience is impossible, and the concept of internal gender identity is entirely contradictory to the common usage of the term gender in itself. Because we really we have to look at something that has come upon us. You know, it's like an instant, like we have these rapid onset gender dysphoria that we're seeing, and all these different things, and we have to kind of like really try to break it down and try to understand it. Where does it come from? You know, I mean, what it's just out of, and I know there's been two spirited people throughout history, but this, this need of just going from one gender to the other and then placing ourselves in so much danger with hormones and, and surgeries and things when there's not enough studies. Right, you right. Know? That's the other thing, too, is when, <clears throat> when as uh, a person transitions and they go through these processes, they don't have answers. They, what I was told is we just don't have the, da the data. We don't have enough no. information. So, you know, part of, that's why I say for me, it was a, uh, it was, it was a, it was an unknown risk. So my answer was to wait until I was healthy enough, um, you know, until I was at my peak of health to even consider it and and this is what i would advise anyone considering this kind of thing is not just physically but also psychologically to get yourself together before you change uh make permanent changes as you're saying mark yeah a lot of people believe that everything's going to be all right everything's going to be solved as soon as they get a b or c whatever it is that they put in their heads and and it turned out to find out once they get there that things aren't any better. And a lot of times it gets worse because now you have medical complication. One of the latest studies that they, they I just read and I, um, they took 5,000 individuals, you know, and it was eight years to gather all this information and, and do all the testing in the Kaiser Health System. And it's one of the largest studies of health of transgender individuals on hormone therapy ever done by Dr. Darius Gedahun, the author of the study of research scientists in Kaiser Permanente told by NBC News, doctors and patients need to be aware of the possibility for increased health risk for transgender women. women. The study found that transgender women were assigned male sex at birth were 
twice as likely as cisgender men or women to have blood clot conditions, venous thrombosis, and um, also found that 80 to 90 percent more likely to have strokes or heart attacks than e- cisgender women. Exactly. How many trans women go into taking hormonal therapy without knowing this information? And right. How many have died because of it? Right. I was going to ask, uh, I've heard you talk a lot. Uh, I would say 90% you talk about uh, male to female. Mm-hmm. And so I was curious about the the uh, other side of the coin, uh, female. On this same study, they say that transgender men don't have the same risk unless they're overtaking testosterone, which converts us to, and to estrogen. So the main culprit for health danger is estrogen. Right. As we see with regular cis women who were given the actual hormonal replacement therapy and have, have created a lot of health issues for themselves, such as cancer, heart attacks, strokes, and, and, and the nature of it. But just the actual um, male population in North America, uh, the sperm count has gone down in, in men since the 50s, like 50%. And the, one of the greatest reasons is because of all, all of the estrogenic compounds that are found in our plastics and our foods and our, you know, different things that we encounter and touch every day. And these are these act as estrogen mimickers that basically, you know, will do um, feminizing to regular bio, biological men. That's why you have guys in their 20s that are having to take Viagra, you know, um, in order to have any kind of sex drive. So um, these are things that are very concerning because these estrogenic compounds are are one thing, but then when a person transitions, they male to female, they transition and they start taking these lifelong doses of synthetic estrogen and um, yeah, the, the, there are very there are very many many associated risks, and and that's the answer to female to male transsexuals do face risk too because you're not supposed to have that amount of testosterone in a female body, so their bones start to become um, affected, ligaments start to get affected, they start getting high blood pressure. I mean, I I've, I've come off hormones several times, and this is the last time, and I'm not going back on them, because it's like playing Russian roulette. The right. studies are there. Well, um, I, I was, sorry, sorry to interject, but I, it just occurred to me. I wanted to ask you before I forget, you know, with uh, male to female, um, there is a real lowering of the sex drive, right? And exactly. Does that happen uh, with, the, uh, with the other side, too? Oh, no, on the contrary. Testosterone is a very um, okay. sex-driven hormone. Right, and right. It, it, yeah, it creates a very increased sex drive for uh, female to male transsexuals. Oh, okay. Um, and that's uh, including if they've had, um, like, uh, inter... Like it, yeah. Yeah, yes, that's including even if they've had. I had a hysterectomy and, uh, and top surgery in um, December of 2003. And my sex drive has always been very healthy. Yeah, like for me, um, I'm quite satisfied with uh, with with the results I got. So, but as I I'll say it again, I was at the peak of health, and I would never consider doing it. And, and you know, I I, I was in uh, in psychotherapy for twenty years. You know, working on all these, uh, you know, wounds I had and, you know, from early in life, right? So, you know, I spent an ex- and I, I spent five years trying to find a doctor, you know. So. It's very important that people take a look at the issues um, that they're facing. And it's not all about gender. Nine times out of ten, right. gender has absolutely nothing to do with it. The population um, in the transgender community are very very uh, neurologically impaired. They have, um, there's also a lot of research and, and studies that have proven that majority of individuals um, in the trans community have what they call a personality disorder. The, the finding of the study reveals that the prevalence of personality disorder was higher among the participants and they took different subjects to, 
trans people and, and individuals that are NATO born. And, um, you know, there was like a 57% um, rise in border um, um, narcissistic personality disorder and personality disorders, along with many other. I mean, there's a lot of studies out there, but like, like we talked earlier, you know, they're, they're being silenced. You know, there is a drive not to allow another voice, and that's very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people are being hurt, and they need to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's all we're saying. We're not against anybody doing what they want to do. It's up to them, but they need to be well informed. Right, right, and I I agree with you, and that's why I wanted you on my show, and that's why I haven't dealt with this issue. Uh, I have a, a touched on it a couple times on my show, but I mean, this show isn't isn't about transgenderism. It, it's about um, much like you, uh, you guys. I'm exploring what's going on in the world, and I didn't want to touch the trans issue. I think you know why, in part of, you know, location, location, location. Uh, But also, uh, it's hard to find people who are willing to um, speak in a a holistic fashion about this. I have uh, a few feminist friends, for example, and I don't want to, I apologize if I am offending any feminists out there, but I, I have close friends who are feminists who just do not uh, want to talk about it. So. Well, it, it's very difficult. You have to um, look at the situation where there's been a lot of language changes forced upon um, issues around, like, in, before it used to be known a pregnant woman, now they want to call it, change it to call it a pregnant person to adapt to female-to-male transsexuals who want to have babies. I mean, it's like they want to force certain things on people. And, and I believe, you know, you have a right to do and dress and express as you wish, but when your expression and your rights go out into somebody else's rights, then we have a problem because we all need to learn how to coexist and we all need to respect each other's boundaries. And a lot of women have been sexually molested from a very young age and they're traumatized and, and they have certain needs and these needs need to be honored. Right. And also... Um it's, you know, the whole thing with, um, oh, I lost my trail of, uh, train of thought, <laughs> but um, what you're saying about respect um, is key. Uh, like for me, exa- my, uh, I think I've given you the example where, you know, I'm, I think uh, people might have seen that, uh, that trans person who, and I, I, this is not a good example, but who went into a store and started yelling at someone, you called me sir. And it's like, for me personally, that's like, holy, like demanding or what? And it's like, for me, if somebody calls me a he, refers to me as he, my, my, all I can do is I can make a request you know, and if they don't want to honor it, that's that's completely up to them. Uh, them. I'm not gonna get all bent out of shape about it. You know, and uh, you know, people have a right. Again, we're back to free speech, right? And I don't want to tell anybody w- how to think of me or or how to speak of me. Uh, my only bottom line is when uh, it's done with malice. You know. Yeah, I think it's important that um, trans people understand that their rights do not supersede the rights of other people. And like Mark was saying, we all need to coexist on this planet. And at the end of the day, April, the honest truth about the matter is that none of this really even matters because we are spirit beings having a physical existence on this planet. And, you know, part of the reason that we're in these bodies is to limit us, is to divide us, is to separate us from our true essence of being, which is, as spirit beings, infinite creator gods that we are. And, you know, this is all like a really great smokescreen. You know, let's divide the sexes. Let's make one procreate and the other one not. And let's Let's make them fight against each other. Let's color them black, white, you know, different colors and races and everything, and let's make them fight. And, and that's, that's what historically has happened. And when we 
realize that none of this three-dimensional reality that we're in is even is even real, other than the fact that we sense it and feel it with our limited five senses that we do have. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is just one big drama. This is just one big play. This is just one big movie that we're all actors on a stage. And science could prove that with quantum physics. It's not like we're just pulling this out of a hat. There's a lot of research that's been done that has actually demonstrated, you know, that there is, that this is just molecules bombarding, you know, through the, the motion of, of the planet that's creating these holograms that we feel it's, it's, it's true. And it's almost like a matrix, or it is a matrix, right. that, that we're dealing with. Okay, I just wanted to say for our listener, if you're just tuning in, <clears throat> this is another episode of Where Angels Fear to Tread. You can check us out online at ckuw.ca and uh, stay tuned at the top of the hour. It's Dave uh, Ferguson with The Trip, and I know he's always working hard to bring you some good stuff. So uh, on the line with me now uh, from New Mexico, right? Is uh, Mark Angelo and I'm sorry, Lana uh, Ariel Cummings, um, and they are a married couple with the trans history. And if you want to check out their work, uh, check out Real Talk with the Cummings uh, on YouTube, and also transitionradio.blogspot.com. And Lena Cummings. And they are hosts of a show called Real Talk with the Cummings. And this is a show that brings you information regarding global issues that we're all facing, such as the latest LGBT news, health and wellness issues, spiritual breakthroughs, and more. We, I think we are all seekers and tellers and love to learn and teach, covering many topics relating to the awakening of our species New World Order Issues, Multidimensional Beings, Spirituality, Duality, Two-Spirit, Religion versus Truth, Music, Important Global News, Fitness, Nutrition, Earth, Evolution, and more. And I wanted to thank you again, Mark and Lena. I hope I said that right, Lena. You did. (laughs) I'm learning. Uh, And I think you are two brave souls, and I think you, you are also a beautiful couple. Thank you very much, Ephraim. We're, we're really happy that you have uh, joined us and, you know, in our chats and everything and monitor things occasionally as you have time to do. And um, we really appreciate you. We, we, we see you and we honor you. Yeah, so how about if we give out your information again? Oh, before before we do that, I wanted to say to our listener, I wanted to thank our listener because without you... There is no show. And if you have any feedback for me uh, and you want to include things that we haven't talked about today, you can email me at April Kuzmak. That's April K U Z M A C K at gmail.com. And I will answer all of your uh, messages. Uh, having said that, uh, so Mark and uh, La- Lena, <laughs> yeah, I got like a, a brain block there <laughs> with your uh-huh. name with your name, Lena. So, um, uh, yeah. So, what is your information again? Uh, you have uh, real talk. It's real talk of the coming. Mm-hmm. It's a, a YouTube uh, channel that we have, and you could just put on the search "real talk of the coming," and it'll come up. And then transitionradio.blogspot.com. Um, and it's, we have links of, of sorts of different types of links with information if people wanted to really learn the nuts and bolts uh, regarding gender dysphoria and, and all sorts of different things that we have on there. Yeah, and I also there was recently uh, a fellow on, I can't remember his name, but you've been on other people's shows too, and uh, I think, uh, I think uh, having... People, maybe I'll come on your show one of these days. <laughs> oh, definitely. Please do. Yes, we would love to. 
Yeah, and I really hope we can do this again. I had sent you an email, and I wanted to apologize for presuming that we might do shows in the future without really asking. Oh, so. oh no, we love, we love anyone, anywhere that we're given a platform for us to be able to educate and communicate and learn from one another, because that's all we're, we're here on this planet to do, to make connections with our human family, to learn how to love and condition. And that stems to learn how to love ourselves and condition, because that is so important. You know, so we're there whenever anyone wants to give us a microphone to speak and to educate. Awesome. Like, I think the next opportunity would either be uh, later in February or sometime in March. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of a little unsettled because I'm in the midst of a move and I think I already told you I'm taking on uh, home care assistant work part-time. So uh, we actually had uh, some success. Uh, I, I met the woman who, um, like, we're a team with her and uh, we did uh, about two hours of Tai Chi. So uh, there's no question now. She She's definitely going to enjoy it, so... Yeah, I'm a big believer in modalities, natural modalities, um, teaching people how to heal themselves, and teaching people to understand themselves completely, because most people don't even know who they are. They've been programmed from the time they're little by their teachers, the doctors, the parents, the priests, you name it. Everybody's like created this whole scenario of what they think they should be, and they never know who they truly are. So if anybody takes any message from that I'm not being on here today, so that's to understand what gender dysphoria is and what gender dysphoria is not. And I explained what it was not in the beginning of the show, but, you know, there's many different reasons why people may be experiencing gender dysphoria. We're looking at personality disorder. We're looking at the autism spectrum disorder, which a very high percentage of trans individuals suffer from. We're looking at post-traumatic stress disorder, sexual trauma, self-hatred, body dysmorphic disorder, social contagion. A lot of transgender individuals have difficulty socializing. They're very introverted and are afraid to express. And so they become involved in this whole gender swap thing. It becomes like a rescue. A lot of it is uh, peer pressure, cultural homophobia, uh, associate disorder, attention deficit or hyperactive disorder, uh, bully for being too butch or bully for being too fat if you're a man. Right. Um, difficulty fitting in, depression, anxiety. Um, it just, there's a slew of different reasons why we like want to identify with this gender dysphoria, and we're not really dealing with the real issues. We're given a Band-Aid. And through the years, then after that Band-Aid is, is no longer useful, you find out, well, I've done it all. My surgery has been on hormone for years. Why am I still not happy? Yeah, like for me, I, I did the surgery, and to be honest, not much changed for me because I was always walking around before that. I was always doing Tai Chi. I was involved with African dance. Uh, 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 and um, I think what happened was uh, when I healed up there in 2004, 2005 is I went from being an introvert, like you're saying, and being really sort of, you know, uh, locked away to really opening. And I think this is, this is key is opening your heart to people. Exactly. And there's a lot of self-healing that needs to be done. You know, and then people learn to express. If you're a feminine man, express a way. There's, society is the one that needs to change, not the individual. Society needs to allow to let people express and be so that people don't have to undergo these dangerous surgeries and take on these dangerous chemicals. That people just should be freely to be who they are. Right. Without having to go from one box to another box. Right, and that's what I was thinking that thought passed through my mind uh, a couple minutes ago is that, um, you know, you've got uh, people, people want to fit in, right? And, and if all we have is the option to be trans or not trans or to be gay or not gay or to be heterosexual, you know, like, and, and now there's what, like 30 some odd genders and it's like, to me, this is a... Personally, how I feel is that this is a, uh, a, a, a recipe for um, conflict and uh, people lashing out. Because, you know, here in Canada, we have an issue uh, with one of the professors in, uh, I think it's Ryerson, um, Jordan Peterson. And uh, while well, I don't agree with everything he says, um, I do agree with his notion that uh, the government 
forcing people, you know, dictating what comes out of your mouth, you know, is a lot different than saying, you know, you can't incite hate. But, you know, forcing people to, you know, like if somebody identifies as an elephant one day and, uh, you know, uh, a girl the next, how are we going to keep track of all this? So I think it's just very complicated and uh, it's a recipe for for um, uh, p possible negative uh, reactions, you know, on, on the part of uh, people who are quote-unquote just average or normal, you know, and just trying to live their life. I think it's unfortunate what's taking place with uh, Jordan Peterson and, uh, and the trans community in... Um, attacking him for saying what he is trying to say. And I think that there's a lot of loss in the area of debate and communication um, with a lot of people within the trans community because they get offended and then they start wanting to pretty much just attack another individual. And I think that there's a place for... for honest, open, thoughtful debate, respectful of each other, respectful of each other's past and history. And, um, you know, I think that it would be done better if people could come together. And like we said before, if we could all just coexist within the spectrum of being, first of all, human towards one another and not attack it. Yeah, and for me, that that is what it comes down to, too. Like, for me, it's, I, I think the Bible even says, you know, you know them by their fruits, right? And so for me, it doesn't matter whether I'm trans or not, or two-spirit or not. The fact is, you know, how do I treat people? Do I treat them with a loving kindness, or do I treat them with disrespect, right? And it's got to start at home. It does. So it I want to... I wanted to thank you again, and we're out of time. And I hope you've, I've really enjoyed this. I hope you have, too. Oh, and, yeah. And thank you for letting us uh, have a voice. Yeah, and I also wanted to say to our listeners, uh, April Kuzmak, that's April, K-U-Z-M-A-C-K at gmail.com. If you have any uh, questions or any suggestions, please email me, and I will answer every one of them. So I'm going to let it go there, and I want to say miigwetch, and uh, I wanted to uh, say much respect and much love, and we'll, s we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Have a great Thanks day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.